go. What's going on, guys? This video we're going to be doing capacity from Hack My VM. This is box here about medium. And yeah, let's get on to the video. Some room, my room, room, so bring the dense compromise R 10 as 0 to 0 to 1 slash 24 slash IT 0. Do this with the the box 10 as 0 to 35. So do control shift Z, so we're going to map scan. So do MMISC for default scripts, my information was kind of important in my IP. Do this, I'll do minus U verbose. Look at the ports, I do port deep for HTTP, port GD for SSH, port 445, and also port 139 for SMB. Some servers do port 80. Look at this, we do have username and also a password here. Some do admin, admin. It doesn't seem like we can get it logged in, so do admin, just blank password. It doesn't seem like we are both logged in. So do control users code. And we don't have anything under the source code. I'm sorry, but I need some more numbers here. We're in GoBuster. So do GoBuster to remote my user into the IP address. We'll, we'll do my SW for user share or list or bus. Directory the list of the readum.txt. We'll do extensions HTML, txt, and also PHP. Before doing that, I do want to take off this login.php. First, turn on that. You already have index.php, login.php, CSS, logout, and the slash cloud. Before visiting slash cloud, I do want to look at that map scan. Like in that map, you can have uh, port 2 open for SSH. This is running Ubuntu. Port even for HTTP. It's running Apache. And port 139 and also port 445 for SMB. Before doing this, I do want to run SMB's map, which will allow us to view the shares on the host rate. So do 10 as 0 to 0.235. Here we do have two shares here for print and also for IPC. By default, we do have these for no access on both of these, right? Another thing I like doing is running out enum for Linux. Enum for Linux allows us to view the shares or numerate for the shares and also numerate for users on the share, right? So do enum for Linux. We'll do my say on 10 0 to 0 to 35. Before doing that, I do want to run, put this or output it to a, um, I'll just output it to like oh, output.txe, which you can later on view, right? Looking back at the GoBuster, we do have a slash cloud here, which I'm going to visit. So I'm take off this login.php. And here we do have a slash cloud for this uh, five minutes file upload, right? We can use external URL, which I can start by testing for like a file.txe. See if it does get it from our server, right? So doing this, I'll do HTTP. We'll do 10 0 to 0 70 on my IP address some port 881. But we'll get this file.txe. I'm starting my Python server. So I'm just going to touch like a file.txe. I'll do Python 3 minus M, HTTP.server from port 881. 881. So we can upload the image and it is uh, telling us to select an image. So let's see if we can just put like a JPG. If I do upload the image, you'll see that we do get a 404 not found. I did get that file on JPG, which we don't have, but it does show that, right? Because it does get try to get that file, but we do have a code 404 not found, which is that message file not found, right? For this file on JPEG. I'll just move this file.txe. Move this file.txe for file which changes for JPEG. Let the Python's over one more time. Let's see if it does actually uh, get this JPEG that we do have. So this file JPEG, we can upload the image. We just drag and drop this. And to show that this is an image and this container is right, because it's not an image, this is a file, right, that has no data in it. So doing this, I do want to check for, we can start by uploading like a .php. So I'm going to move this file JPEG to like a file PHP, file.php. So do PHP, you can upload the image, and it does have a filter for PHP, I'm guessing. So I'm sorry by saying this with the burp, let's see if we can uh, know what this application is doing. So I'm just going to go to burp. I'm going to close, we'll go to next, start burp. So I'm just going to go to proxy, go to options, set my specific address on 10 070. We'll send this uh, file JPEG, which does allow the extension, right? Because I do want to know the difference between bytes of knowing like the difference between uh, uploading a TXC or like uh, a PHP, right? Which not, does not allow it. And also a JPEG, which does allow it, right? Because it both those both of those responses will have different bytes on burp, right? So I'm just going to go upload an image. Sends with the repeater, go to send. Looking at the bytes, we do have a thousand bytes here, which is going to be for this file on JPEG. 
So I'm just going to go to convert selection, go to URL, URL decode, which is going to be for the file JPEG. Look at this. So there's going to be a lot of um, reasons or a lot of methods that could be checking, right? For example, we do have like the content length, or maybe it's checking for the content type, or maybe for the extension, which is most likely going to be extension, right? We do know it does check extension because we do have, we know, that place select image. So we do know it's just checking for the extension. Uh, I'm going to see if I can try by uploading a PHP using the content type. Um, usually by some applications will only check for this content for this certain content type, which in this case we do have the application URL encoded. Look at this. I do want to test for like a file.txe. You'll see the difference in bytes, which is 992 bytes. So now we know that 992 bytes is for the bytes. That's not going to allow us to upload, right? Do you JPEG? You'll see the difference for 1000 bytes. Look at this. I do want to check for if we do like an image, uh, just to show you, we can do like image content type. You'll see that we do have the image slash JPEG, which can be for this image GIF or image JPEG. So I'm just going to copy this. We'll put this into the content type. We send this and we still at 940. So it is definitely checking for this content type because if I do upload this file on JPEG, it's not allowing me to upload it. If I do this for the same thing for TXE, it's still not still not allowing me to upload it. So we do know that it is checking certainly for this content type for this application to be there. Just to confirm that theory, we can put the content type here. What this JPEG? You just see that we do have a thousand bytes, which it is allowing us to upload, right? So I get this. Another thing that we can start by doing is checking for um, the field, right? This field, we can see if it does uh, allow us to add like a dot JPEG to so checking for the extension of this field. If it is uh, checking for JPEG or PNG file, right? If I do like a file.php, we can check if it, the file does um, this get from the server, the file.php, only the file.php, not a file.php.jpg. So we do have my Python server here. So let me just start this one more time. I do a file.php. Do you see that I only just get the file.php? So to do this, I'm just gonna go to PHP ref shell. Just gonna go to PHP ref shell. Go to PHP ref shell.php, go to raw data. Copy this. Come into this, let me get this. We'll be into PHP ref shell.php. So we're going to act mode, we'll change this to 10 to 0 to 070. 10 to 0 to 0 070. We'll just import 9001. We can add our PH River shell. We'll just head this out. And we do have our IP address and also our port. So we'll come terminals here. We'll do all RAM, net cap, 9000 VP, 9001. So I'm just going to do, uh, we'll start our Python server one more time. We're going to be getting this found or this PH River shell.php. So do HTTP, we'll get this PHP version.php. I'll just upload a dot JPEG there. You can upload the image. You do see that we do get our PHP version.php. Copy this. We do ID. We look back and now we're dub 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 data. So I'm gonna start by exporting my term is equal to X term. I'm gonna start by running a bin slash bash main sign. And we're under dub 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 data. So I'm starting running as my SLA. I'm going to go under slash home and start by doing some manual animation. We do have a user as this admin here. We do have a local.txt, which I'm guessing is going to be your flag. No so a scripts. Looking under here, we do have a script.php. No so a lib. So I'm seeding to lib. We do have a bunch of PHP files. I'm going to check for the script.php. We do have a permission denied on this. So I'm going to start by doing some random mission under slash var. We'll go into backups here. We do have a backup.zip, which we can use um, use our Python server and get that backup.zip, right? So do Python 3, we'll do my sim, HTTP.server, we'll put it do one We'll do control shift L, we'll do mkdir. We'll do mkdir for zip, cnt zip. So do get HTTP, 10 0 0 235 We'll do this on port 8081. Get this backup dot zip. 
Now we can. So we can unzip this backup dot zip. And we give a lib directory. We have all these files. So under here, I'm guessing if we let's count out the script.php. So we do have a home sysadmin for scripts. It is backing up this um, script sysadmin folder. So we'll see you back. So I'm sorry, getting the shell one more time. So I'm just clear my terminals here. Sort of bar wrap. Send this one more time. Does seem like it is clearing. So I'm just gonna go to cloud. We do have my listener here. We'll get this PHP version dot PHP. And upload the image. We do ID and now we're under WW beta. So I'm just export my term one more time. Go to X term. I'm just gonna run a bin slash bash minus I. I'm seeing to var dum dum dum. We'll see it into HTML. We'll go to cloud. It doesn't seem like we have anything. So I'm gonna this last directory that we do have is under slash opt. Under here we do have a data set KD KDBX file. So I'm gonna run a Python 3 minus M HDB down server from port 881. We do have this uh, data set K KDBX. I'm just run this on port 5555. So CD into zip, I'm just gonna do get HTTP 10 0 235. We'll do some port 5555. We're beginning that data set that we did have, data set K KDBX. We're gonna run a file against this data set. So again, this we do have a key pass password database. Um, doing this, we can run a key pass to John, which will allow us to crack this on data set uh, KDBX file. And we can now put this to like a file.txt and crack that file, right? So doing this, we can do a key pass to John, do data set, we'll run this a file.txt. Use John, we'll do my minus word list. We'll do equal this to user share word list, rocku.txt, run this against file.txt. This seems like it's already cracked, so we'll do John my slash show against file.txt for this. Um, this is the password for that file. Look at this, we can run a key pass online. We can go here. The search of for browser. Go to open file online. Let's go over here. We can go to online web app. We can go to open. We'll go to other locations. Go to backup. I'm going to hack my VM. We can go to opacity here. Opacity. We'll go to zip. Get this data set KDBX. We'll go to OK. We can put that password in that we did have. Under here, we do have a username, which is going to be for sysadmin, also that password. And then we do have the password, right? We did have port 22 open for SSH, so I'm just going to SSH into sysadmin. So let's do sysadmin at 10 hundred 235. Come my terminals, we'll do ID. And now we'll do sysadmin. So doing this, I'm just running sudo myself. Doesn't seem like we can run anything on sudo. So we do have a scripts directory here. I'm um, looking back at the scripts directory. We did have a script.php. If you did look at the comment, we do have a backup for scripts sysadmin folder. Anytime I do see like a backup for scripts, um, I usually run like a PSPY or a PSPY64 because this will allow us to view the cron jobs if it's being run by another user or being run by a root. So doing this, I'm just gonna do wg HTTP. We'll do 10 hazard 070. We get some port 881 for PSPY64. So I'm CDE back, CD to my documents here. We're going to do a privilege escalation. We'll CD into Limpies. So do Python 3 minus M HTTP dot server from port 881. I'll just do some port. We can just 
can go back, we get this PSP Y64, do CH mod plus X for PSP Y64, run this PSP Y64. Looking at the processes, we do have a, um, let's see what we do have for any cron jobs, right? So right now I am looking for that scripts.php that we did see. If anything is running that script.php, because it does seem like it is running. So after a while, we do get a user bin PHP against this home syshad bin scripts, scripts.php, right? Uh, we do have a user um, or bin sh running a user bin PHP and same thing, right? And this is a cron job since it does have the user s bin cron minus f. So doing this, I'm going to cd back. I'm cd into my home directory. So here we do have the scripts here, which we did try. If we cd into scripts directory, you'll see that you have a script.php. So I'm going to remove that script.php. Doesn't seem like we can do anything with that. So we didn't know that we do have a user bin PHP running against, uh, or cron job running against the scripts, right? Uh, against this uh, script, scripts.php. So I'm cd back. So instead of trying to remove that script.php inside this uh, scripts directory, I'm going to start by renaming the directory, right? Renaming this directory, we can start by um, putting our own PHP rashad.php inside a script, which will allow us that cron job to execute, right? Because using the move command, we can do mv against scripts and rename this to anything that we want, right? This can rename that directory that we do have. Now you'll see that we do have uh, the file directory. If we cd to file, you'll see that I do have the scripts.php. Doing this, this will allow us to create our own scripts directory. I'll make directory for scripts, cd into scripts. And now we can vi into a scripts.php, right? Before doing this, I'm going to go back. We'll just cd, we'll copy this. I'm just going to get this. We'll be into PHP .php. I'm going to go in reactor mode. I'm going to change this to 100070. We'll do some port 9001. Some direct quit. We'll do chmod 777 for PHP We'll do chmod plus X for PHP .php. But remember, we do have the cron job running against home uh, sysadmin scripts, uh, scripts.php, right? Or script.php. So doing this, I can move that PHP version to script.php. Now we do have the script.php with the PHP version that's going to be come calling back to us. So do all RAM, I can't mind some of the PM, I one. So I'm proceeding to slide to dev SHM, run on Spice Lane, run that PSV Y64. So doing this, we can wait for that cron job to run and see if we do get a reverse shell. So after one, we do see that we do have the user bin PHP, which execute our own scripts directory and also our own script uh, .php, which was that PHP reverse shell .php. Looking back, we can do ID, we can CD back. On small slide, we can counter proof .txt. Okay, let's move into the video to fully get the script. And I'll catch you guys at the next one.